last teaching. Thank you. Now the next teaching says, in order to accomplish more easily whatever prayers you have made or intentions you have formed, it is profoundly beneficial to rely upon an embodiment of spiritual power. Bring to mind, therefore, the one for whom you have the greatest devotion or to whom you feel the deepest connection through your practice whether it is the great and glorious master of Guru Rinpoche or noble Avalokiteshvara and with the confident trust that he is the embodiment of, um, he is the embodiment of a Chinese version of Avalokiteshvara is female. So he or she, maybe you can say, is the embodiment of all the precious source of refuge. Pray one pointly for the fulfillment of your aspiration. Okay. Now here again, we're talking about death and preparations. So. <clears throat> Okay. So most people meditate. Why? Because they want to feel happy, less stress, try to enjoy their life and try to find a happy life through meditation so that they can do everything they have always wanted to do, right? So for them, meditation is not a way of preparing for death, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's only for this life. Of course, that's a good reason to practice meditation. Um, then, some other people like, you know, I heard that like soldiers and police office meditate because they want a calm mind, right? So that they will, they will be mindful when they deal with all these problems with other people. So other things, like there are many reasons to practice meditation, but we should think that one of the main reason we practice the Dharma is to prepare for ourselves for certain death. Because um, the Buddha said that the, the supreme mindfulness is remembering that life is impermanent and death is inevitable. That's what he called it, supreme mindfulness. You know, people, people die every day. Yet, how many of you, of us really believe, really, believe that death will happen to us. We don't. Otherwise, there is no time to do other things. If you really believe that I might die today, and you, you believe in reincarnation or rebirth, you want to make sure that time for practice, but we don't. <laughs> Even though we see in front of us, you know, in our eyes, you know, people die every day. So the Buddha suggests first preparation for death is to convince yourself that 
it is absolute certain that you will die, although you have no idea when it will happen. Whether you are Buddhist or not, the moment of death itself is very important. And we also need to think about why we are afraid of death. Um, I think usually there are many reasons, but the main one is, is ordinary people like us, no one knows when it will happen and what will happen when we die. Even, you know, when you, you will die after the death, this will happen, that will happen. You know, even Buddhist masters told us what will happen after death, but, but how much do we believe them? So the bottom line is we simply don't know what will happen and not knowing this situation, it makes us so afraid of death. That is why death is such a big issue, I think. Um, if you wonder why and how do we prepare for death if we don't know what will happen after death? It is true, we don't know what will happen, happen after death, but the preparations will help us to understand the truth, which is which is impermanence. Life is like a dream. Nothing truly exists. So, um, How do I say? Um, if you think nothing will help us at the moment of death, um, that's very wrong. Usually, you know, everything we do um, or we think or we feel while we are alive is influenced by ignorance, emotions, karma, right? But once we fully understand and accept the truth of our lives, the essence of our lives, not just intellectually, right? But uh, practically and experientially, then we will become fearless. We don't have to be afraid of death. Even if we cannot fully realize this truth, but becoming sort of familiar with it will reduce the fear of death. And by realizing a state of awakening, we will become fearless of death. And then we will no longer be afraid of death. So as I said, according to Buddhist teachings, the essence of our mind is the Buddha. That is the truth. Okay? That's why preparation will help us to understand this truth.
so basically all these preparations are to um, realize that each and every sort of samsaric phenomena is an illusion. So if you feel overwhelmed by fear of death, just to look at it and try to understand the truth, the essence of death, and let go of all attachment to this life, And by reducing attachment, you can reduce your fear of death. Because then, you know, Buddhism tells us that um, uh, for a spiritual practitioner, this moment of death is extremely important and very precious instead of afraid of death. You know, it helps us to recognize the true nature of this life. But the problem is if we never prepare for death, we will regret when death approaches us. And of course, by then, it will be too late for us to do anything for ourselves. So now, this time, this day-to-day -day life is very precious, very, very um, important. Um, now, another important preparation I want to let you know for death is to take refuge in the three jewels. If you are a Buddhist practitioner, That means, you know, the heart of taking refuge is trust. So at the moment of death, if you are not an advanced practitioner, but you have a good connection with Buddhist practice, then what you need to do is rely on the power of prayers. That's what uh, uh, Dr. Chin's advice, one of the advice here, right? Rely on, if you are not advanced, advanced practitioner, if you are, then you don't need recitations, you don't need visualizations, you don't need mantras, prayers, nothing. But if you are not advanced practitioner, but you have a good connection with the Buddhist practice, then you have to rely on the pre, you know, this um, prayer, you know, because prayers will help you to remember your practice, nothing else. Remember the three jewels. The prayers will help you remember three jewels. Remember bodhicitta. Remember the essence of your life, all of that, the prayers will help you that. And also rely on the blessings of enlightened beings, which is the prayer. Okay. These are very important. Right now you feel like, oh, I heard this, I heard that so many times. But at the moment of death, these are really important instructions. Whoever you feel the deepest connection through your practice, you have to remember that. As it says here, whether Pamma Sambhava or Avalokiteshwara or your masters, right? Whoever you have the best connection to, you need to remember and sort of, um, if you are not advanced practitioner, I'm talking here, I'm a Dotukchen. You know, so you need to remember uh, this enlightened beings and visualize them in front of you with your confident trust. Then you pray, right? At the moment of death, you have a good connection with Buddhism. You believe these teachings. Then you visualize 
sacrifice whatever these things, lantern beans, and then you take refuge in them. Then you think also, now I'm going to die. So I will rely on the instructions of my teachers, and let go of everything. And in all my future lives, may I have a precious human birth, complete with all the freedoms. May I follow the Buddha's precious teachings. May I become the uh, student of an authentic master. And then, of course, you should also make the Bodhisattva's vow at the same time, because making the Bodhisattva vow can also make your mind more courageous. And it can also help you be not afraid of your death. And it can take you onto the path of the Bodhisattva at the moment of death. So after you renew the Bodhisattva vow, then you make an aspiration like this. May whatever I do with my body, speech, or mind, bring nothing but benefit to all sentient beings. Okay? May I never be separate from bodhicitta, the supreme altruistic mind. For the sake of others, may I be fearless and ready, even if I need to give up my life for them. So if you are, uh, you are able to pray like that with your heart completely open and, 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 and invoke as intensively as possible the presence of your masters because of your, your trust, your faith in Lantern beings, they have the power to give their blessings, protect you from fear of death. They have power to protect you from whatever you may pray for if you have pure faith in devotion, okay? If you don't have pure faith in devotion, no matter what you pray, you, you know, you say whatever, it doesn't work. But if this is the, if you are not advanced practitioner, at least you take refuge vows, so that means you have faith in three jewels. So then with based on your faith, and then you say prayers like this will help, you will protect for sure. Okay. So we need to make sure we go to pure land, okay, after we die which is in Lantern, uh, in Lantern Place, I say, like Long Chamber, Mapan Rinpoche, Bapta Rinpoche, Lama Tsongkhapa, you know, so many masters always say that we should pray to be born, especially in Amitabha's pure, pure land. Okay, Skavadi, Amitabha's in Sanskrit, pure land. My root teacher, Kanchin Jigme Pansok, spent his whole life focused on Amitabha practice. And he gave teachings and empowerments of Amitabha to you know, his, his students so many times because he said it's, it's, it's easy for us ordinary people, those with um, those who are not advanced practitioner, those with the delusion mind, delusions, uh, to be born Amitabha's pure um, um, is the best. So thinking about Amitabha and his realm will lead us to our inherent Amitabha, right?
Lama Tsongkhapa says that when reciting prayers to be reborn in the pure lands of, uh, of the Buddha, of the Buddhas, one should mainly focus on being reborn in Skavati, Amitabha's throne, pure throne. It also said that you can get enlightened more quickly there than other pure lands because of Amitabha's motivation. Now, Amitabha made a, a strong aspirations to be of benefit um, to suffering beings. He prayed that by merely thinking of him or reciting his mantra, um, sentient beings would instantly be reborn in Skavati after they die. So, so my teachers always say, there is no pure land easier for us ordinary beings to go to than Amitabha Buddha's pure land. So we should make uh, effort to be born there. Which is of course also about your mind. Of course, this is not just at the moment that, but we need to practice right now. So in order to take rebirth in Amitabha's pure land, uh, first, you should always pray to be born there. That's your motivation. This is the one of the main cause. Because you know, Buddha Shakyamuni said, everything depends on your aspiration. Whatever happens depends upon your intention. Whatever, you know, prayers, whatever wishes you make from the heart will be successful. And then second, you should think about the benefits of the pure land. Because this gives you desire to be born there. Right? It's like bodhicitta. First, you have to think about the benefit of bodhicitta. That gives you develop genuine bodhicitta mind. So when you are there, According to the, the, the sutras, the Buddha Shakyamuni says that when you be born in Amitabha's room, you will hear teachings directly from Amitabha Buddha, who is surrounded by Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and um, is an excellent way to prepare for death. Then third, I'm talking about according in order to, you know, um, practice Amitabha Buddha. Um, the third, you should practice Bodhicitta, right? Then you will be born there as a Mahayanist. Okay. Then fourth, you should accumulate merit in as many ways as possible and dedicate all the virtues, actions, and merits as cause for rebirth in that pure, pure land. Okay, so those are four causes and conditions in order to go there. Okay, so if any, anyone wants to practice Amitabha, let me know. I'm more than happy to teach and give the instructions and transmissions and all of that, okay? So here, Dutrup Chene advised us to pray one pointedly for the fulfillment of our aspirations at the moment of death. 
as you know, in the tantric teachings, the Bajrayana, there is a special method for transferring your consciousness after death to a pure land called the Poa, right? Poa. This is another preparation for death. I was given Poa teaching during the Bardo teachings and few times. If you would like to learn Poa, you can watch those teachings, okay? But always remember that the essence of Poa is devotion. If the dying person has unchangeable trust and belief in the method and is also familiar with the practice, then Poa is another great practice for death. But without devotion and a wholehearted belief in the path of Poa, this practice simply will not work. And these days, it is very difficult to find anyone with this kind of devotion. So unfortunately, Mpoba doesn't work. It depends on your devotion and your familiarization. So that's, a, that's a, another method, another very good method if you know how to do it, Mpoba. Now, the next teaching from his, Dr. Uh, Tipson says, um, now, at the actual moment of death, it will be difficult to gather, gather sufficient strength of mind to meditate on something new or unfamiliar. Is, this is really true, which is why you must choose an appropriate meditation beforehand and train until you are familiar with it. This, this is really true. You have to remember, keep that in mind, uh, familiar with it. Then as you pass away, you should devote your thoughts to the meditation as much as you possibly can, okay? Whether it is remembering the Buddha, focusing on the feeling of compassion, cultivating the view of shunyata, which is nature mind, or remembering the Dharma or the Sangha, which is three jewels, right? I already told you that. Uh, in, order, in order for this to happen successfully, it is also important that you train yourself beforehand to think. From now on, as I pass through this crucial juncture of the time of death, I will not allow any negative thoughts to enter my mind. Okay, basically this, I like this one. This is really helpful. This is really true. Even like Western people, you know, who are not believe usually this kind of visualizations, all of this and this. It's, I think this is really good. So please remember this, okay? So it's, it's very, it says basically it's very important at the moment, actual moment of death, you know, you should meditate something very familiar with. Um, that that because of before you know before you pass away you have to meditate on that right 
So we have been talking about all different kinds of preparations for death. And it is important to understand that death is part of every moment of in our lives. But here again, Dutupchen advised the summary of, I think, um, all the preparations for death, okay? This is the summary. That's why I like. Easy to, easy to remember and very profound. So that is, you know, the summary of all the preparation for death. This is again, I want to say at the actual moment of death, it would be difficult to remember all the details of your practices or something that is totally new and unfamiliar. Whatever your capacity is, it is important at the moment, the actual moment of death, try not to feel attachment, anger, or any emotions. Keep your mind as pure as you can. Okay? And in order for this to happen successfully, it is also important to think like this. From now on, as I pass through this crucial moment of death, I will not allow any negative thoughts to enter my mind. This is so important. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me this? From now on, as I pass through this Dr. Chen's words, I'm just, re, you know, repeated you. From now on, as I pass, I mean, this will happen. Can you believe it for us? Okay, from now on, as I pass through this crucial moment of death, I will not allow any negative thoughts to enter my mind. Don't think about your family. Don't think about your, your loved ones. Don't think about your belongings or, you know, don't think about your body, nothing. That's what this, I will not allow any negative thoughts to enter my mind. Okay? This commitment is important at the, at the time of death. As I said, the last moment of before you die, the last moment of thought has extremely influence, you know, power, determine uh, your next life. So don't enter, don't let enter any negative thoughts, the actual moment of death, okay? Then you should focus on the most, in, most important preparation that you always keep in your mind. Okay, whether it is, he said, it is remembering the three jewels or focusing on the bodhicitta or realization of nature mind, whatever you, you, you trained your mind the most in your daily life, okay? These are, these are very, very, very important, okay? Because we are going to die. Okay, it will happen to all of us. Okay. Um, one of the Buddhas, you know, the, um, Akasangarbha asked Buddha, this is so important too, I will tell you this. He asked Buddha, how should a Bodhisattva view the mind? at the moment of death. And then Buddha replied, at the time of death, the bodhisattvas should cultivate great compassion. Since all phenomena are contained within bodhicitta. Okay? The bodhisattvas also should cultivate freedom from thoughts. Since all phenomena are naturally Lemonos. The bodhisattvas should 
also cultivate the non-attachment since all things are impermanent. The Buddha said the Bodhisattvas should cultivate not searching for Buddhahood elsewhere since the nature of mind is the Buddhahood. Okay? I memorized this because I want to remember this, the actual moment of my death. So then I don't have to worry, like, where should I go, you know? Do you understand? Bodhisattvas should not search in for Buddhahood elsewhere since the nature of mind is the Buddhahood, is the Amitabha's pilgrim. That is what the Buddha suggested on how we prepare for the time of death. So these are, these are what I will try to do, try to do, right, at the time of my death. And I can make it more simple for you so that you can remember them easily, okay? So there, as I said, there are three important practices you should remember when you are facing death. If you are a Buddhist practitioner, the first practice is rest in the nature mind without any grasping, any attachment whatsoever. Okay? It is the best way to say goodbye to this life. If you don't have that capacity, okay, then the second practice is generating bodhicitta and having a good intention, uh, inspiration, so that your next life, you will be born as a great bodhisattva. So try to die with a bodhicitta mind. It is also a great way to end this life, okay? If you cannot do either of these two practices, you may not, you may, I don't know. Then the third practice is at least you should say some supplication prayers. You can use your devotion as a path. And when you genuinely supplicate the guru and the lineage, you feel, you feel the, the, the um, the presence of their blessings that helps you uh, become relaxed and fearless. There was a, uh, recently there was a lady from um, Tibet. She suffered um, from illness for a long time, but she has a tremendous faith and devotion to Kanchin Jigme And then actual moment of her death, she, she saw that Kanchin Jingme Panso came and blessed her. I mean, the, the, it's your mind. So it helps, it, it, it will work if you have devotion. So if you don't have capacity in practice in any of these these things, this instruction, these three instructions, you know, which is you don't have recognition as your mind, you can't generate bodhicitta mind, and you don't have a genuine devotion to your lineage, to your whatever, then basically you are helpless. So make sure not like that, you know. So that means you will die with no capacity, then all the Pardo experience will appear. Then what? Then it is also important if you know someone who has the capacity to practice like Poa, right? to have them 
do that practice for you at the moment of death, that could help, maybe not, I don't know. And there are also many instructions to um, read a dying person, such as in according to Tibetan Buddhism, you know, liberation through hearing in the bardo, or you can choose any of the authentic bardo instructions that you are a little bit sort of familiar with. And somebody will, if 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 there is if it's possible, always repeat the teachings and instructions as many times as you can. That will also help a little bit. And also, if you know the dying person very well, you will have some idea about what they believe in, right? So you can help you know, him or her best on what they believed in. And if the, if the, um, I mean, right now I'm, now how to help others, I'm talking that, right? When, if you see your friend or somebody you know who are dying, you can help like this. So if the dying person, is Buddhist, then you can remind them of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and read all the Pardo instructions sort of out loud to them. And if they are not Buddhist, and if the dying person believes there's no such thing as a next life, then there is nothing you can do but just. Uh, just to be loving, caring, and give them your full attention at the moment of their death. That will be good. And when you know how to die with a peaceful mind, then you must not create a situation that disturbs a dying person's mind make them upset, not good. You must create the right conditions so that it's easy for them to die peacefully. Even though they are not practitioners. So don't have any emotional sort of uh, in the room, that person, you know, who are dying especially when death is close. You, you know, sometimes Tibetans, the, the person, their family, one of their family died and people came and cry and all this. It's not good for them. And if you want to help the dying person, there's another good one, how to help. Um, the life release is one of the most important virtues you can do for your uh, friends or your loved ones, they have died. For example, you can, you can release, you know, like buy sort of live fish uh, that have just been caught and return them to the water or release other animals, save the life of beings that are about to be put to death and dedicate that. It's also a very good way to help others. Um, so when you are helping the dying person, as long as you are motivated by bodhicitta and the, the wish to help them dying person become enlightened, it really doesn't matter what you do. It will help. Um, that's that. Uh, what else? Another important thing to know is whether you are a good meditator or not, um, during the process of dying, the Tibetan tradition 
not tradition, the, the, the yeah, Buddhist tradition um, recommends that uh, um, we avoid moving or touching a person's body. It is extremely important, they say, you know, the teachings say it's very important that the body not be moved as soon as you die. Because if you have the best ability to meditate, you can remain in your nature mind, even after, you know, you die. And then you enter the meditation of sort of this nature mind or one pointedness. If your body is moved, it will disturb your meditation for sure. And also the Bardo teachings, remember, um, says that people can't die or at one moment. Th there is in sort of inner dissolution process that takes place over a few days sometimes. Also ordinary beings sometimes are unable to leave their bodies as soon as they die because of attachment to their body. And there are many circumstances, so, you know, um, some are also unable to die quickly because the, the, the subtle consciousness remains in their body for a number of days. So if someone's body is disturbed before they are completely dead, we don't believe that the Westerners, the doctors say, you know, oh, your, your heart is stopped and blah, 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 now you're dead. I pronounce you that we don't believe they really completely die. So if you disturb their body, they may feel suffering and they, it, it will be very harmful. So I'm telling you these things, right? Because you, you, you came here, you wanted to uh, hear this kind of preparations. So you need to prepare these things now, if you can. Um, and keep them in your mind. Um, it's very difficult in the West um, try to sort of leave the body for three days, even like it's a very difficult. Um, but do your best. At least for a few hours after death. Uh, that's that. Okay, now the last. Now the last teaching says, the masters of the past had a saying, okay, better than a long time of virtuous activity done with a dull mind is just a single day's virtuous action done with a mental clarity. Okay, as this says, if you practice all this, you have first made every effort to develop a sense of inspiration and joy, it will be that much more effective. Even though it is difficult for the likes of me to benefit others, I will recite the verses of refuge and pray that in all your future lives, you may accomplish and serve the Mahayana teachings written by Njigme, fearless. Njigme means fearless. Dotupchin Njigme. Uh, Dotupchin is just, but his real name is Njigmit, means fearless. Right? So now we're done. Um, from the Buddhist point of view, Um, just to let you know that death is not complete end, okay? We have another opportunity to find a new and better life. Therefore, we have to be prepared for it. If we prepared for our journey, then we will be benefited by recognizing um, this life as well as death and after death. So Buddhist view, death as a tremendous um, spiritual opportunity. 
because we all have the Buddha nature, right? This basic goodness of human beings, Chu Jim Tongba described, is ground as the basic goodness of human beings. It's very good. So at the moment of death, the mind separates from your body and every one of us experience the nakedness of our Buddha nature, if we recognize it, then we will be liberated right there. We don't have to go through all this bardo process, bardo, you know, of life. So we will be liberated right there. That is the pure land of Buddha Amitabha's realm. The most important, you should also know that this lifetime is the most precious, crucial. So you have to think that I'm a, I'm a practitioner. That means I need to change my negative emotions by practicing the Buddha Dharma. Okay? You should ask that question to yourself you know, and try to find out the best instruction in practice and best method that can change your negative mind. They are very changeable. And the best thing you can do is follow these instructions and which will definitely help. I think that's all for today teachings. I hope these teachings will help you to understand how to prepare uh, for your death, how to practice when you die. Um, these teachings will hope uh, help you to understand who really you are, what kind of life you want, Um, and reduce your attachment and selfishness. Um, so it is wonderful that you want to prepare for your next life and uh, practice for it. I mean, it's really, really will happen sooner or later. We don't know, but it will happen. So this is my last talk for today. Uh, I would like to thank you all for sharing your time and your presence with each other. Of course, I would also uh, would like to Thank those who have worked hard, help this teaching, uh, taking care of this retreat. For my heart, thank you so much. Um, another thing is we have, we will have another two public teachings, uh, the way of Bodhisattva, the benefit of Bodhisattva teachings. One is, one is in this month. The other one is the next month, May. And then we have a very, very important May retreat, which is very new. It will be very interesting. Uh, this is the first time um, to... Um, start this kind of retreat in the West, I believe. So if you will be able to join us, please, it's time now. So through the Zoom, or we have a place to uh, practice and teach together so you can come. Uh, coronavirus, is disappeared. It's emptiness now, so you don't have to worry, I think, <laughs> maybe. 
Well, it doesn't matter, you get sick or whatever, right? Um, you're not going to sick, okay? I'm just joking. So, um, so yeah, two public teachings and then the May retreat, that's all. Then I will not have um, teaching for a while. Then, you know, you will be free. So just let you know that, okay? Thank you so very much. Uh, I hope um, you have a wonderful weekend and uh, um, and also if you wanna um, uh, watch this this teaching again, we, we record it. Thank you very much for calling that too. So you can watch again when it's published. So um, I think that's all. And now the time for dedication. And um, that's all I want to say. <laughs>